But you know, I have found that there's a lot of, a lot of misconceptions and a, and a lot of just uh, uh, wrong information out there, even in our churches, even with Christians. I mean, Christians should be leading the way in this, shouldn't they? I mean, it's Christians who should be out there saying, hey, there's only one race. We all go back to Adam. There's different people, people groups. We're all equal before God. I mean, it's Christians who should be leading the way. Instead, I see a lot of problems in the church. I see racist attitudes. I see prejudices. I see all sorts of wrong ideas. It's because we're taking our ideas to the Bible, not starting from the Bible to build our thinking. Let me give you an example here. In fact, I'm going to ask you a question. I, I sort of hate doing this in a way, but I want to point out uh, just uh, where we're at as a church and some of the problems that we have. I want you to put your hand up if you've heard of anyone ever talk about in our churches, if someone said it to you, you heard it from the pulpit or you read it in a book or, or just heard it from anywhere about the curse of Ham. Put your hand up if you've heard about the curse of Ham. Yeah, I think all of us have heard about the curse of Ham. How many of you have also heard that the curse of Ham has to do with the color of skin, with uh, uh, dark skin and so on? Yeah, we have, haven't we? Now, question for you. Where in the Bible does it ever say Ham was cursed? Where is the curse of Ham in the Bible? You know, I can't believe this. I go into church after church, particularly in America, more than any other country, I find this... We, we hear about this curse of Ham. Where does it say curse of Ham? It doesn't say that. You know, back in 1958, uh, from a Mormon source, uh, the Mormons were, were, were told this. We know the circumstances under which the posterity of Cain and later of Ham were cursed with what we call Negroid racial characteristics. And back in 1929... Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses in their Watchtower publication stated this, the curse which Noah pronounced upon Canaan was the origin of the black race. By the way, they got one thing right. There was no curse on Ham, but it was on who? Canaan. That's right. In fact, what I want to do is this. Let's look at Genesis chapter 9, verses 18 to 27. Look at verse 18. And there it says, And the sons of Noah that went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham, the father of Canaan. You notice how it singles out Ham as the father of Canaan? You notice that? And then if we go down to verse 22, it says, And Ham, the father of Canaan. You know, why is that? It talks about Shem and Japheth, but Ham's the father of Canaan. and Ham, the father of Canaan. And then it says in verse 25, cursed be who? Canaan. Not cursed be Ham, cursed be Canaan. There's no curse of Ham, but Canaan was cursed. Now, why is that? What's it all about? Well, it's interesting. Noah actually had, uh, well, he had three sons, but Ham actually had four sons, okay? And Canaan was just one of his sons. And if you look at the descendants of Canaan, they are some of the most wicked people that ever lived on earth, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, the, the Canaanites, evil people. Now, think back for a moment. Ham was disrespectful to his father. And from the context of Scripture, it seems to be that that was some sort of uh, a sexual sin. Do you know what I believe the curse of Canaan is all about? This is personally what I believe. 
I believe that Noah saw in Canaan the same problem as his son Ham, only it was much worse. And it's a warning to fathers to train their children. Because you often see, when one generation, when, when you see sin in that particular generation, and, and things that are not biblical, not scriptural, things against God, you often see the next generation who will then learn from that and exhibit it in a greater extent. And I think that's what you're seeing here. I think it's just a great warning that fathers need to train their children because Canaan became what Ham had led him to be. And Noah saw that, and look where it led to, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, nothing to do with the color of skin. and nothing to do with anything like that. And I can't believe that that sort of uh, information is still out there in many of our churches, and it is. We need to build our thinking on the Bible and stop taking uh, man's ideas from the world and adding them to the Bible and ending up with all sorts of wrong ideas and, and prejudices and so on. But you know what? The church gets into another problem when they believe in millions of years. You see, if you accept those same dating methods that, that people like Dr. Hugh Ross, who's a progressive creationist and teaches the church to believe in millions of years, if you accept those dating methods as, as absolute, you've got a major problem. I'll tell you why. We're going to scan through... A, ...quite a number of uh, skeletons, um, of, of listed for you, uh, a number of skeletons of humans that using the dating methods that evolutionists accept, that, that date back hundreds of thousands, millions of years and so on, you'll notice that these human skeletons, and there are literally hundreds and hundreds of them, and we can scan through them, and I did that just to show you there are many, many, many of them, and they go back, all the way back, to nearly two million years. Now, stop right there for a moment. If we've got all of these human skeletons that date back to nearly two million years, to you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, and up to nearly two million years, what are we going to do with them? Because, you see, anyone who reads the Bible knows you can't put hundreds of thousands of years or millions of years in those genealogies between Adam and, and, and today. It would destroy them. And, and there's no way that you can force those genealogies back, back hundreds of thousands of years, and, and certainly not millions of years. So what do you do with them? Well, Dr. Hugh Ross, who's a progressive creationist and had a great influence uh, on the church, sadly, uh, says this. Here's a quote from him. Starting about two to four million years ago, God began creating man like mammals or hominids. These creatures stood on two feet, had large brains, used tools. Some even buried their dead and painted on cave walls. However, they were very different from us. They had no spirit. They did not have a conscience like we do. They did not worship God or establish religious practices. In time, all these man-like creatures went extinct. And 10 to 25,000 years ago, God replaced them with Adam and Eve. In other words, he says there was a race of men and women before Adam and Eve who don't have souls, uh, but they did cave paintings, buried their dead. In fact, they did have some religious practices from the evidence we've seen, uh, but they can't have salvation because they're not uh, descendants of Adam and Eve. You see, do you, know, do you know what he's talking about here? He's talking about Neanderthal man and, and, and Cro-Magnon man and, and so on, who are obviously descendants of Noah.